Yeah. Very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us for the Tuesday edition of the show. It's the first one for the week. We're glad to be here with you, Ham Yemi Adebayo. I want to give you a quick rundown of what to expect on the show tonight. Tonight, we'll continue our countdown to the 2020 Olympics. We'll also continue with our countdown to the Euro 2020 Championship. Tonight, we'll talk about the French Open as we uh, get to the business end. The quarterfinal match currently going on as we speak. Daniel Medvedev and Stefano Sissipas up against each other for a place in the semis for a chance to take a crack at Alexander Zverev for uh, a place in the final, whatever gets to place Zverev and, and goes on to probably uh, be in the final as well. So uh, it is going to be very interesting. The ladies as well, not disappointing. Uh, Corey Goff, the American, still moving on strong. We'll also talk about some ladies uh, making it to the Grand Slam semis for the first time in their careers. That's the outlook of the show. Thanks for joining us uh, once again. All right, so uh, we go into it. We dive straight into all that we are doing. We'll also give you a slice of handball uh, as we go on on the show. We'll also look at what is happening on the domestic scene here in Nigeria. So that's it. Sit back, relax. Once again, I want to say thank you for joining us on the show tonight. Let me quickly introduce my partner in the Lagos studio. Kenny Idris joins me uh, today as we take a trip across the money spinning world of sports. Kenny Idris, thanks for being here with me on the show. It's good to be here. It's good to uh, share the Tuesday night with you again on Sports Tonight. Um, and with the, with the rundown, especially when it has a lot to do mm -hmm. with the women. A lot of ground to cover. A lot with the women. I, I always like that. All right. Let, let's start from Lagos. Something yep. happened over the weekend. Um, the activities of the Lagos state government to ensure that um, sports facilities are in tip-top yep. shape. And now we're talking about um, rehabilitation on the uh, popular uh, Mobola G. Johnson Sports Complex Raw Park as the uh, contractor formally took over the facility for the commencement of the work, talking about the rehabilitation. Uh, of course, speaking at the official end of we'll, we'll listen to that later on as uh, we, we move on. Uh, the facility has produced and is still uh, producing world-class athletes for the country, and that's the reason for the upgrade. Uh, work has reached an advanced stage on some sections yeah. of... Uh, and, and I know that you frequent these places... Yeah. You know about that, uh, Kade, but it's heartwarming. It's, it's even, heartwarming. Even without being a sports person, Roe Park is you must have You must have heard Roe Park, yeah. Ro Park for one or two reasons, mm -hmm. and I think it's long overdue. I think this, this should have happened a long time, a long time ago. I think um, everything sports happen at Roe Park. Maybe you cannot do so much of athletics, mm -hmm. but you're talking of volleyball, handball, basketball, uh, a lot of the indoor, a, a lot, a lot, a lot of, the of the, events. It's, it's, it's just scattered around Row Park. And for you that is doing other sports that probably it's not uh, taking, taking center stage at Row Park, you'll find a way to just be there, to just, you know, probably join your colleagues. Or you must have been involved in one of those sports just because of the, uh, you know, cult name that Row Park has created for itself over the years. And if you're lifting the face, if you're hiding and also uh, bringing to level some of the things that are already there. For, for me, I think uh, it's kudos to them, but I think it's way, way long overdue. And also, look at the name against um, the Ropa Mobology Johnson. These are huge names mm -hmm. that should have, you know, uh, any, uh, um, uh, any monument Synonymous, in their name. Yeah. Very, very beautiful. Be so, top because, because they did so much for the state and also for, you know, sports that we're talking about. So, Ropa, I can't wait for the new look uh, because like the barbed wire surrounding some of those indoor you know spots is already gone i want to see everything All in right. top shape and you know reporters we have a way of just loving to report our rope mm -hmm. all right so that's it uh, let, let's just quickly say, take some reaction uh, speaking at the andover of the facility to the contractor the chairman of the lagos state sports trust fund uh, femi pedro uh, asked some words uh, to say obviously very delighted that work will begin at Row Park, and he also lays out the plan uh, f that the state has for the facility. But, uh, our first decision as a board is to rehabilitate this complex. Once we start from here, we make this a model, and we use it as a stepping stone to other parts of the state 
to develop sporting facilities like this. So today in rehabilitation, rehabilitating this complex, we started with the swimming pool. We put down the old swimming pool and we are rebuilding from scratch. This swimming pool that you are seeing here is an Olympic sized internationally sanctioned swimming pool. If an uh, Olympic competition takes place in Nigeria today, this pool will be one of the sites because it meets the standard. Not only that, we are going to make it available for communities around Lagos. Young people want to learn how to swim. And those who are good swimmers who want to train to be world beaters. We want to make it open to them so that they come here on a regular basis and use these facilities. So that's what the swimming pool is about. We have an indoor sports hall that was built many years ago. It's also world class standard, but we are now renovating it. We are going to refloor it. The flooring is going to be, again, a world class standard. So that if there is any international basketball competition taking place in Lagos, they check the quality of the flooring before they bring their competition here. And this one will meet that standard. Okay? If there is an African competition taking place, the same thing happens. But at the end of the day, the activities here will be beamed up. Millions of people will expect to use this place. And from here, we move to another division. All right, that's it. Uh, of course, uh, laying out a plan, uh, talking about the reasons uh, for that and um, what uh, the facility um, will be used for. Uh, of course, many stars being discovered at Roe Park and still a lot going on. Let's move over and talk about handball, Kende. Uh, of course, let's uh, talk about women's uh, handball uh, national team. We, yep. we, talk, we talked to the coach and uh, one of the members of the team um, a while ago. Uh, ahead of the African Women's Handball Championship. But it has all started, and uh, today uh, the results coming to us uh, is that uh, they've started on a losing note. That's what happened. Uh, Nigeria's next game will be on Thursday, but the first game, Nigeria against Congo, uh, Democratic Republic, we lost the game uh, 16 uh, to 35 points. So that's what happened. We're going to be playing the hosts, Cameroon, later on, and Kenya on Saturday. And... Um, the side couldn't contain the firepower of uh, the Congolese in both halves of the game. Uh, we spoke to the coach earlier, and you know, he, he talked about them trying to build this team yeah. and um, trying to take this team from where it is to where they want the team, the team uh, to, to be. be. So going into this tournament, it wasn't as if uh, expectations were that high. Yeah. But uh, we were just hoping maybe we would. So I could say maybe I'm not too disappointed um, with the results, but I'm hoping that against the other teams. The against them, uh, I think this first game, very marquee. Uh, <laughs> I was expecting something from this game. Now, mm -hmm. the best player from the league that just concluded in the women's uh, Keda, the lady couldn't even make the team. That's it. She couldn't make the team, you know, eventually yeah. go into Cameroon. Mm -hmm. That is how competitive this team, or, uh, this team is. So I felt with this competition, which is very LD, they should go there and do a lot in blowing teams away. But like we always say, no disrespect to other teams. We are talking about our own team. And also, if we check the record, Nigeria has been to four finals in the same Women's Nations Cup, won once, as far as back as I'm, 1991. So they, if you're looking historic, Nigeria is one of those, you know, well-known teams. Okay. But for about 20-something, I think about 27 years there about, we've not been to... Okay. You know what? We can't flog a dead us. Yep. We've lost the first game. Yeah. And we'll try to pick the pieces uh, in the next Against, against Cameroon. We'll, we'll, which, see, we'll see what happens. Which is the host. <laughs> yeah. I guess so worried. Very, very <laughs> All right. Um, Austin Okoda Ackman is uh, waiting in the wings uh, to join us. But before I uh, bring Austin in, uh, let me quickly touch up on something he loves talking about. So by the time I bring in here, we'll be talking about that thing. Let's go to the Olympics and let's just say it's 45 days to go to the Olympics. And uh, from where we stand, it is going to happen. 45 days to go. And as usual, I love asking people if they're feeling the vibes. So that's the question that will be going to Austin the corner uh, when we see his face. Greetings to you, Austin. Thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Um, we're happy to have you. And uh, 45 days to go. Are you feeling the vibes now? No, I'm not feeling the vibes. 40 great is yeah, good to be on the show. Uh, it's still it's still same old same, you know. Um, 
a lot of dark clouds around the, the Olympics. Um, at 45 days to go, if it was back in the day without COVID-19, it's like we're already having the Olympics, you know. We're talking about records that will be smashed. We're talking about athletes that we look forward to seeing. We'll be talking about, you know, um, a lot of expectations. But lately, we are trying to see how uh, we're going to protest next. Who's bringing the next petition that the Olympics should not happen? Uh, what are the figures as regards positive cases are saying in, in Japan? You know, all of those, you know, just makes it um, a very difficult uh, Olympics for us. But then again, let's wait and see. You know, I always used to tell people that something about sports is, uh, despite the uncertainty that, that you know, uh, gathers before it starts, the moment it starts and then the action is out and then records are being made, where records broken and spectacular performances, then it just think, takes over the air. But, but with your questions, am I feeling the vibes? No, nah, not yet. Maybe with five days to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go on the touch relay. Um, of course, that's that's one of the positive signs so far. The touch relay moving through. Uh, this time it's the Akita Prefecture, and um, the days of, uh, for the Olympic is, is fast approaching. Uh, here you could see sprinkling of the crowd. Uh, not much, you know. COVID nineteen is has forced the organizers yeah. to scale down on a lot of things. But, but this is this is going on. It's good. The Olympics will start on July 23. Yeah. I mean, we are, we are, we've gone past whether it's going to happen or not. It's going to happen. <laughs> uh, how it will be, surely it's going to be scaled out. But you see this. It's, it's, it's one of the, to me, it's one of the positives. Yeah. The organizers have always found ways to just, to just keep yeah. this going. Yeah. And we've seen test events, um, you know, uh, swimming. Uh, athletics, yes. we've seen uh, s a softball, mm -hmm. a, a whole lot of exhibition, uh, testing when it comes to different sports for the Olympics and somebody like Justin Gatlin that got involved with um, in one of the test events that has to do with athletics, he said with what I saw I think I'm ready and the Olympics will be safe, you know, hail and hearty for every athlete coming in and even, you know, the, the uh, other visitors like the media. Now, there is also something about the media, I said there will be GPS monitoring mm -hmm. every reporter that comes into the country or every journalist that comes into the country. You will register your designated, you know, route during this period. So if you go anywhere outside of where you've registered, then you would, you know, face the music. So a whole lot of, uh, um, like you said, scale down. There are a whole lot of uh, precautions right. that has to do with events that will go down. But like Austin said, when it starts to happen, we would all forget that there is a precaution and we will just enjoy the moment. Okay. Um, let me go to Austin quickly. I mean, we're talking about the fourth wave. That's what they're dealing with right now. We've seen uh, a, a lot of cases in, in the past months and, and, and weeks. And I want to ask you, should <laughs> Tokyo residents, should the, word, the words of the IOC be enough to assure Tokyo residents? I mean... We've seen explosive outbreaks, we, we must say, in spite of the fact that we won't see uh, the Olympics. They've recorded more than 760,000 cases in recent times yeah. and uh, more than 13,500 deaths. But the assurance of the IOC and the government, should it be enough for Tokyo residents and by extension the people of Japan? It's not enough here, I mean, it will never be enough. You know, I always have this line that a problem is a problem until it is solved. And COVID-19 is a problem. It's a pandemic, you know. It's a worldwide worry. It's a concern, you know. So uh, these people are worried and they've, they've voiced their opinions. They've told you that, look, uh, a lot of them have come together to sign petitions and said, we're not comfortable with this Olympics. The IOC can come out and say whatever. The government will definitely want to, you know, defend their decision to host this, com this competition. Of course, you know how much um, money they've put into this and what they've lost by just postponing it, just for the records, just for prestige, just for history's sake. They just want to host this, this event and get it out of the way, but you, you cannot take away the concerns of your people. And it's so funny. For instance, what Kenya just mentioned, that when journalists or visitors come into uh, Tokyo for the Olympics, they are going to track you with GPS. If you go outside the areas where they want you to, to be, then you're in trouble. So, for instance, someone like me that 
um, always goes to the Olympics as a non-rights broadcaster because I have the rights to shoot most of the main events. I go outside to get behind the scenes, to tell city stories, to feel the vibes of the Olympics and bring in people from all over the world, you know, and tell a beautiful story. You can't even do that now because of the restrictions. So you see, uh, as somebody that is a resident in Tokyo will be, you know, where is this person from? Uh, or they might just even, you know, who knows? The virus is still out there. And if they start recording cases right there at the Olympics and it's, contact tracing becomes possible. So, yeah, I mean, no matter the assurance that the IOC gives, that the government of Japan gives, the people are worried. And there are valid reasons to be worried because COVID-19 is no joke. We're still respecting right. protocols, right, in the UK. They're still telling persons, go get the vaccine. I just got the vaccine last week. So, as long as people still have this worry, it's going to actually put a whole lot of uncertainty on this Olympics. All right, all right, okay, well said. Let's move on on the show. Let's talk about the positives, uh, some of the things about the Olympics. The International uh, Table Tennis uh, Federation has named four Nigerian players for uh, the Tokyo Olympics. Nigeria's Adam Ofiung, Olufunke Oshonaike, Olajide Omotaya, and uh, Kodri Arino are among the 135 players listed by the International Table Tennis Federation for the singles event at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics scheduled for Japan next month. So very interesting to have at least those players. Um, and you never can tell if you're still in the competition that uh, anything can happen. Nigeria did not qualify for the team events of the competition and therefore are not among the team listed for the mixed doubles. The tennis event will hold at the Tokyo Metropolita Metropolitan Gymnasium from July 24 to August Six. We, we, we know the amazing feats, um, uh, the things that Aruna did last time out. Maybe we'll be able to do that again. Uh, you never can tell. Yep. We need to go on a break right about now when we return from that break. There's still a lot for you on Sports Tonight. Thanks again. Well, they do have action. Uh, Bill is aimed at 12 league titles between these teams, second against seventh. Well, matches like this are hardly ever decided by current standings. Oh, good piece of passing from Amber. And it's whipped into the penalty. He blocks the first hand that comes! And it's the magician for Tom Bomer! He's a golden player, and when he gets the opportunity to find himself in the box, there's no better danger man than Victor Mboum of Aimba International. His third goal of the campaign. His second on the road. What a brilliant sequence of play by Aimba. And you've got to say he's just at the right place. Not quite sure what the, what the fans are all about. But look, this is a brilliant delivery. And you know, a striker like him has honed his career on scoring goals like this and getting to the right spaces. And the moment you let a top player like this, he's been such a long seven for Yimba to get in the box unmanned, certainly been a rock, a real rock. Nabil at the back for Yimba. Oh, and a penalty to Kano Pelas. Well, it all starts from a throw in there. Look, when the ball bounces, I think it's one of the first things you thought, you know. When the throw-in comes in, you don't let the ball bounce. The ball should never bounce there. But Emmanuel Ampia comes too close, comes too tight. I think if he realizes that, you know, the player is literally going nowhere. It's a man who scored nine goals. He is about to make it. Goal number 10! And he ensures that won't stay. His attempt of the season is a fight back. That is a world-class penalty, Mano. Look, to strike the ball into the top corner. When he hits the, the angle 90, you know, a lot of times on the streets people tell you, any, put any goalkeeper in goal, you don't catch that. And, you know, you just talked about him missing the penalty in the last game. But this is a way to come back and... All right, welcome back. We're moving on on the show. Still uh, in the mood uh, of the Olympics and talking about uh, the Olympics, the International Olympic Committee uh, has announced an expanded refugee team of 29 athletes competing across 12 sports at next month's Tokyo Olympics. And this is how 
the announcement that was made. I mean, you could see what it means uh, to uh, some of them. They're going to be flying the IOC flag. I mean, some of these uh, athletes would probably have represented their countries, but they are in situations where, I mean, they couldn't, but now they're being allowed to compete under the flag of so congratulations uh, the, to all of you. The, the IOC, and uh, that's, that, that's, very, that's very good. Uh, these guys, countries like countries from Syria, South Sudan, Eritrea, What's Afghanistan, yeah, good, good spread. There is, there is a saying about an athlete that in your lifetime, yeah. during your active years, yes. just be an Olympian. It's not winning a it doesn't medal. Matter. For you to be an Olympian, the feeling is whether, you, whether you're coming under the IOC as from it the refugee, doesn't matter. for the fact that Justin Gatlin, Roger Federer, uh, Venus Williams, uh, Serena can talk about being an Olympian, you can also. And that, that is where the joy is coming from. If they mention those stellar names, the common denominator that you have with them is that, is that they, they are Olympians, Olympians and you're also an Olympian. Olympian. So it's you good know, enough as an athlete yeah, that just, you're Olympian during I, your lifetime. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm very happy for the trainer yeah, I'm, I'm happy too. that made that. Let's quickly listen to the IOC president, Thomas Bach, talking about that um, incident and explaining why some decisions were taken that would get Austin's thoughts on um, you know, the uh, refugees running the athletes running on the IOC flag, what he thinks about it. But first, let's listen to Thomas Bach give his thoughts and reasons why some of those athletes were chosen. This uh, will be forever one of the most emotional moments in my life. Uh, getting to know uh, these athletes, getting to know about uh, their personal stories. Uh, you have their young athletes uh, who were at risk for their life, who had to give up everything, who were then risking uh, their life, having to go uh, through moments of uh, a terrible uh, human humiliation, uh, and uh, then uh, coming out of this uh, with uh, such a, a strength, with such a, a energy, with uh, such an uh, optimism. All right. Um. He's emotional. We're emotional as well. I mean, people who normally should be despondent, should have lost hope. But here we are talking about the power of sports, bringing smiles to the face of people and a lot of things that sports can do. I've always said where diplomacy fails, try sports. Sports is a powerful, powerful tool. Countries that, that are not on talking terms, you can get them to sit down and talk with football. Case in point, 1998 World Cup, Iran and the U.S., for 90 minutes, we're friends because of football. But here we talk about the Olympics. And let me get Austin's thoughts about it. I don't know if you're as emotional as Thomas back, but very happy for some of those guys who had to run for their lives, who had to leave a lot of things behind, and now they get to troop out for the Olympics. They're going to be filing out immediately after, uh, uh, you know, be, they will be filing out before the other countries file out. They will be flying the IOC banner. I mean, it's going to be a memorable time in. In, in their lives. I know, yeah, I mean, I mean this thing was, um, uh, was commissioned in 2015, and I think the first time our witnesses was at the Rio 2016 Olympics when 10 athletes, you know, uh, came out under the refugee Olympic team. And it was such a beautiful story. You, you mentioned uh, it made people to feel the power of sports, you know. Uh, we keep talking about sports having the power to promote inclusion. That's one thing that this refugee uh, Olympic team does. It, they said that it has the power of letting persons know that they can have a place to call home. And that's so beautiful, you know. Uh, having those guys that have gone through so much in life come come together to compete under, you know, one Olympic flag, you know, and then to, to even be amongst these Olympians, you know, kind they captured it so well. Every sportsman and woman live to just for just that tag to be called an Olympian. Now, try to imagine a refugee, and it's been since this was commissioned, it's been telling beautiful stories. Athletes from South Sudan, athletes from DR Congo, war torn zones that never thought about, you know, ever coming out there to to have that that hope of of competing at the Olympics. This has given them that, that assurance that with sports, equality can be achieved, inclusion can be achieved. And then with that, we can make this world a better place. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you in all that you have said. The world can indeed become a better place. 
and we can get a chance to put our worries behind us, forget about our troubles, smile. That's the power of sports. Uh, let's talk about something that I that I doubt we can smile about. <laughs> the international friendly. Nigeria and Cameroon, second game. A lot of us thought, well, we're going to get back our pound of flesh. Didn't happen that way. Ended goalless. I don't know if there's anything to say, but let me stay with Austin. Your thoughts on that game. Some said it was drab. He ended goalless. Expected the fight. Didn't see one. But it's a friendly, I guess. It's a friendly, but it was a friendly against the indomitable Lions of Cameroon. Yes. And one that, that we lost we lost the first. So uh, with this one, I was expecting to, you know, show some bite, you know, bring back some respect. When you play this sort of international friendly, you put everything uh, at stake. You know, fans bragging rights, you know, taking a look at your team as you get ready for the AFCON and build up for the World Cup qualifiers. I wouldn't say it was drab, but it didn't give me the sort of intent and purpose that I was, I was hoping to see, particularly in terms of tactical discipline yeah. from the technical team. This, this Something about General not I know you can't experiment with the national team. This is the super eagles of Nigeria. So if you have some certain persons in that team, it's because they merit it. Can we see them play? Can we just can we just try and see how we can just you know juggle things and and say, oh, this might work or this actually worked. But he's not he's not doing that. For instance, yeah. yesterday he told us that Francis Zor was going to man the post. It wasn't Francis Uzor today. I, I, for instance, um, I like the fact that the three-man defense did, did, did play good football today. Shea Abdullahi for me was brilliant on his runs and tracking back. With Fred Indidi, work rate was fantastic. He filled up every position, was physical. They make us miss Organic uh, uh, Tebo. Um, but um, maybe Onoachu has shown us that it should be a substitute. I'm not saying that's what it is, but he has shown us that these two games that he started, it wasn't all that. There's still some level of understanding between Alex and Wobi. There's, there's still some level of understanding that needs to be achieved between Alex and Wobi, Kelechi and Acho, and for instance, and Ahmed Musa that was just joining the team. That's why I talk about tactical discipline. We, to be able to, you know, do something, to be creative. To, to play, you know, there's a sort of game you play, like the first game. I was even, even so, so sad we lost 1-0. Why? Because we created chances. We're just unfortunate not to kill those chances. But with today's own, I think it was just running. Running endlessly. Running endlessly. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, could let, I could let you go on and on. You speak the mind of a lot of people. I'll be interested to hear his post-match, uh, the, the, the last post-match. I just had to shake my head at some of some of the things that Gennard Raw said. But, you know, I, I'm very sure we get some answers to the question. I want to get Kane's thoughts as well. I don't know if you, if your, what you, your summation yeah. of what transpired in that game is the same as Austin's. But word on the street is an interesting game is the game you win. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. So, but sometimes, you know, we talk about gallant losers. Mm. We talk about, you know, gallant losers when it comes to loss of points or loser, uh, loss of game. These are not gallant losers. Now, the simple question I ask these days, because I was one of the top advocates for Genero. I kept speaking for the man. Mm -hmm. Let him stay on. Let him stay that. on and all of that. But I think nothing is changed. Now, the simple question, what happens in our training grounds? We've talked about this whole Paul Onoachu. At the time, Simi Wanko had a look in into the team. We have wingers who just want to do their own thing. I, I, I want to get to the, to, uh, um, to the line cutting, I do a lot of bending, you know, mesmerizing, and then shoot. We see that a lot, and you put a big man there. I'm not speaking for Paul or not true, but I'm looking at the team and looking at the way they work together. Now, I mentioned Alex Iwobi. In the first game, a lot of questions rested on Alex Iwobi. In the second game, more questions on Alex Iwobi. I don't even want to go to why he's not making the team in Everton, but this is the super egos that we feel you are fitted in. Why are you not doing the same thing that we know you to always do? If you talk about the defense, maybe a little. Now, after the first game, a paper had, um, a publication had it saying, same old general. 
because we predicted the, li uh, the lineup and, true to and form. the only difference was Ahmed Musa that didn't play. Yeah. In this same game, almost to the letter, hey, the reason why we have friendlies, you hear some coaches called the most absurd of players that had a good time, probably a good two months into a friendly. Let me see what you can bring to the table. As of the so time when the chips are down, we I can, can know as of the time the when teams were being called, we kept talking about James Ward Prowse to come into the uh, um, English national team. Lo and behold, he came in and he's making the final call because the man had a good season and at the end of the day when he got into the team, he was able to push out some regulars. This is what we're talking about. Let the guys who you call into the team, like Austin Caption did, these guys were called because they did something fantastic so let's where see. they were. So, I, 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 as much as I am one of General Ross, you know, advocates, he can do Fans. this. I think at this point, <laughs> it is General, do your time and go. When I mean time, I mean your coaching period. <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't go as far as say exactly. that. But, but it's your opinion and I respect Serious. I, and, and I respect it, it, that. It, it's becoming worrying. If, if we can go on and on, but we have to stop. We still have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. But let's move on on uh, the show tonight and quickly take a look at the Nigeria Professional Football League match day 26 fixtures is where we're going next. We'll take a look at it. I'll probably spend a minute or two. We still have a lot of ground to cover, like I said. Let's give that to you quickly. Plateau United up against Kasuna United. These matches will play tomorrow. Uh, Aimba and Adamawa United. Rivers United up against Carlo Pillars. MFM will take on Abia Warriors. Uh, well, on the street, they, 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 they are traveling these days not as bad as it used to be. Aqua United up against Heartland, Jigawa Golden Stars, Toko Wiki Torres, FC Fine Bar will take on Quara United, Lobby Stars will try Rangers for size, Slurshire Stars will take on Takada FC, that's why United will take on Wari Wolves. These are the fixtures. Austin, let me come to you. Please do this in a minute or two. Take a look at these fixtures and uh, tell us what to expect. I'd like to say MFM continue their good run. What yep. a season they are having already. I mean, as at the time they started, uh, a lot of it was a topsy turvy ride, but now they're beginning to get some stability. Uh, Kuchola Lekon Gabriel is doing a good job. Let's see how they can go far with that. Sunshine's Dakada. Um, the new man says, look, um, that, that, that they're going to win their next game. If they don't win that one, it's going to be a big problem. I think they've gone 18 games without a win, yeah. and it's an all time record. <laughs> in the Nigeria Professional Football League. So, um, it's a very difficult time for Sunshine Stars. Um, for obvious reasons, Rivers United and, and Kano Pillars, that's a cracker of a match. Kano Pillars just coming off that fantastic win against Aimba, going to play Rivers United. This is the sort of game that actually tells you if you want to win the title or not. So, sure, sure. they need to show some character going to Port Accord. It's going to be a very difficult game, but they are on, they are on a good run. Aqua United still unbeaten uh, in the league uh, for about, I think, 14 now. So, against Heartland in Uyo, they need to show that they still want to stay up there. I would like to see what Quara United can do against FC Fine Uba. No surprise, they are still my surprise package of the season because they are showing every, they're telling everybody that cares to listen that look, they can compete for the title. Did yeah. you see that goal scored by Afiz Nasiru? <laughs> As arguably one of the goals of the season. So I'd like to see what they can do away from home. All right. There's a lot of fixtures to look forward to, but those ones really will get me talking. All right. Uh, same, same one minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I think um, the Aimba Adamawa United, because I want, I want to see after the ghost of the whole uh, continental game, saying by what you can do, Canopilas Rivers definitely it should be there. MFM. Let's see how the good run for um, you know Atland Aqua United. It's about Aqua United for me, boy. A bit of Atland. Atland not getting so much motivation when it comes to welfareism. But the team led by Fidelis Ilechuko still getting points here and there. Okay. So I want to see them continue. And the final game, definitely. Uh, this Quara United is really getting everybody All talking. Right. Okay. All right. So let's move on, 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 on the show. Time not our friend. would have loved to talk about the NNL. But let me just quickly read a statement from the NNL. Uh, the Red Monsters, Ben and Insurance game that everybody has been talk about, talking about. Uh, there's a release from the NNL saying that the case is yet to be determined. And um, by the uh, O and D of the NFF, following a protest by Bendel Insurance, we will give you more updates on this. Uh, time not on our friend, not, not our friend on the show. We probably would have talked about it, but let's quickly go on and talk about the European 
championships euro 2020 that is tonight we're taking a look at group e group e is where we're making a stop tonight and in group e you have the nations on your screen poland slovakia spain and sweden spain are three-time champions yeah. uh, of uh, the uh, tournament well, Slovakia, well, when they were together with the Czechs, they won <laughs> once. But aside that, uh, the other Nothing teams, spectacular, yeah. uh, you could easily look at it and say maybe peak of the pack would be Spain. Yeah. But Spain have their problems now. Sergio Busquets takes test positive. positive. The team is in isolation. Yeah. They are putting some other players in a bubble just in case they get Something more happens. Yeah. cases of COVID-19. And even in recent times, Spain has not been Spain. Yes. We've seen them fumble a lot of games. So it's not in court now. Mm -hmm. Spain, like we know. But on paper. What, on, on, on paper. No, on paper in this group. Spain. They still look like the powerhouse. For Poland and Sweden, I've got my fears that this team can stage a top, top surprise. Um, Sweden, yes, uh, the Zlatan effect might not be there. But definitely, they are one of those teams that will just slip underneath. For Poland, they have some very notable names. Definitely, Lewandowski will come to mind when you're talking of, you know, the Polish team. So, and they have uh, a lot of players in the German Bundesliga. Yes, yes. Well, so, so. It, 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 Spain needs to get their acts together to really get out of this group. For Slovakia, you just talked about, you know, the good old days and all of that. These are some of those groups where, uh, some of those things where you check out their names and be like, oh, this, this, this. If they keep their discipline, you know, forming a, a, a team, uh, you know, strength. I think they might just be a shocker. So for Spain, All right. yes, you've got your work cut out, but you need to put in more. All right, let, let's go to Austin quickly. Uh, your thoughts on this group, do you think uh, is Spain and another country, or we might just have to wait? I have to wait. You know, the last time I spoke to you about European football, I told you that, that the look and feel is one that keeps changing, and this is a very tricky group, yeah. a group where you've got Poland, Spain and Sweden, you can't, you, can't, you can't jump. You can't blink. You can't just come out and, and say that you know where this is going. And you mentioned Slovakia also. The sort of team that can you know, punish any big team if you underrate them. And as it looks, the bookmakers will easily write them off. That um, is a motivation for the Slovakia team. You know? So um, it's not team for me in that group. Anybody, any team can actually come out of this group. It's okay. done for me. All right. Well, um, we've crossed the finish line, and uh, I want to thank Austin Okonakma for his time on the show. I just realized that we have to go. That's the show tonight. Also, I want to thank you for finding out time to be with us. We'll do this again some other time. It's always a delight to be on the show. Thank you. All right. And uh, Kennedy Idris, I mean, we talked about it earlier. It's very true. Uh, Stefano Sissipas and Daniel Medved was struggling it out. Anastasia Pavlochenkova is true to the semis. Yeah. Um, who else again? Tamara Zidansek also, also for both yeah. of them making those are, semis. Quick those ones. are the surprises. And I'm still looking at Coco Golf. Uh, I, She's this, playing tomorrow? Yes, this, this young lady. First time in the quarterfinals. She might just be in the semifinal. Two first. seconds. Any bet against Nadal winning? No, I wouldn't bet against Nada. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to make it 14. <laughs> yeah, All right. Uh, again, I want to thank you for your time on the show. It's Thanks for be being here. here. We'll do this again here. some other time. Of course, of course. All right. Thank you as well for allowing us to be a part of your day. We enjoy this. And of course, we'll be back here again tomorrow for the abridged version of the show. I'm Yemi Adbara. Bye-bye now.